Why is it that young women are constantly told how fertile they are and warned about the need to prevent pregnancy when they're young, teenagers and young adults? But no one discusses how fertility actually changes with age. I believe these conversations shouldn't be separate. They should evolve over time to reflect the changing realities of fertility. Yes, when you're young, fertility is at its peak and contraception is essential if you're not ready for a baby. But what's often left unsaid is that this changes as you age, especially as you enter your 30s. As a fertility doctor, I have the privilege of meeting amazing individuals at every stage of life. Some are trying to get pregnant, some are considering it, and others are simply seeking to understand their fertility. And inevitably, I hear comments like, I'm healthy, I feel young, thought I could get pregnant whenever I was ready, or I thought IVF could help me regardless of my age. After years of working in this field, I can tell you there are a lot of myths to dispel. Perhaps the biggest ones being that age doesn't matter that much and that fertility treatments can overcome the effects of aging. This is why I am here today, to bring the conversation about fertility into the spotlight and to empower people of all ages to take control of their reproductive health. Because age does matter when it comes to fertility for women and people with ovaries. This doesn't mean you need to worry or panic, but it does mean you can take proactive steps to understand your fertility and reproductive health. Knowledge is power, and being informed helps you make empowered decisions about your future. Why is this important? Well, according to the World Health Organization, one in six people in Canada and globally face difficulties getting pregnant, a condition known as infertility. In fact, it is said to be one of the most common medical conditions for people of reproductive age. Traditionally, infertility was defined as the inability to conceive after 12 months of regular unprotected intercourse in people in a heterosexual relationship. But more recently, the American Society of Reproductive Medicine has defined it as the inability to achieve a successful pregnancy based on various factors, age, medical history, need for medical intervention, and more. When discussing fertility, I would say age is the most critical factor for people with ovaries. Egg quantity and egg quality decrease as you age, particularly after age 35. With this decline, we see lower pregnancy rates and higher miscarriage rates. Let's break it down, starting with egg quantity. An individual with ovaries is born with all the eggs they'll ever have. The peak number of eggs, six to seven million, actually occurs during fetal development. By birth, this number drops to about one to two million. By puberty, it's down to 300 to 500,000. By age 37, it's about 25,000. And by 51, the average age of menopause in North America, it's about 1,000. Each month, one immature egg matures and is released during ovulation. But many other immature eggs simply die off. As a result, around 1,000 immature eggs are lost per month, which explains why egg numbers drop so drastically over time. Now that we've discussed how ovarian reserve changes over time, let's explore how we can measure it. The key tests for ovarian reserve are FSH, AFC, and AMH. FSH, or follicle stimulating hormone, is a hormone from the brain that signals the ovaries to mature an egg for ovulation. A lower FSH level in the blood at the start of a menstrual cycle 
is generally considered normal and reflects a good ovarian reserve. AFC, or antral follicle count, is an ultrasound assessment of the number of immature eggs at the surface of the ovary at the start of the menstrual cycle. The more eggs at the surface of the ovary, the more eggs are felt to be in reserve in that ovary. And AMH, or anti-malarian hormone, is a hormone produced by the cells around the eggs. The more AMH in the blood, the more eggs in the ovaries. You can think of AMH like a fuel gauge in a car, giving you a sense of how much fertility fuel you have left. So ideally, you want a lower FSH and a higher AFC and AMH. Knowing what these tests are is important, but what matters most is understanding what these tests do and do not tell you. Ovarian reserve tests do give a sense of your egg quantity, meaning these tests tell you whether your egg quantity is average, above average, or below average for your age. They also give a sense of how you will respond to fertility medications that are used to stimulate the ovaries in an egg freezing or in vitro fertilization treatment cycle. But these tests do not tell you if you're fertile or not. They also don't tell you exactly how many eggs you have left or exactly how long you have before your fertility is significantly compromised. And finally, they don't tell you about your egg quality. So let's talk about egg quality. Egg quality refers to the number of chromosomes in the egg. A healthy egg has 23 chromosomes, and when combined with a healthy sperm, gives a healthy embryo with 46 chromosomes. Chromosomes are the structures that carry genetic information, or DNA, in the body. Age is the main factor that affects egg quality. As an individual with ovaries ages, the number of eggs with an abnormal number of chromosomes increases. These eggs often result in no fertilization. But if fertilization does occur, this may lead to implantation problems, a miscarriage, or a baby with a chromosomal disorder. You can think of egg quality like fresh fruit in a market. Early on, the fruit is fresh and abundant, but as time passes, there's less fruit available, and what's there is less fresh or overripe. Lifestyle factors, environmental exposures, medical conditions like endometriosis, and medical treatments like chemotherapy may also affect egg quality. But the most significant factor is age. Currently, there are no specific tests to test egg quality. Age is the best marker for egg quality at this time. So what does all of this mean for you? Well, understanding your ovarian reserve provides valuable insights into how your egg quantity compares to other people your age, as well as your potential outcomes from treatments like egg freezing or in vitro fertilization. And understanding the impact of age on egg quality allows you to seek fertility testing and treatment at the right time. So when should you start thinking about your fertility? What does seeing a fertility specialist at a younger age offer people? While most people wait until they're trying to get pregnant and facing difficulties, it may be beneficial for individuals in their late 20s or early 30s to visit a fertility specialist, especially if they're not planning pregnancy in the immediate future. This early testing and treatment gives individuals the opportunity to understand their fertility status and to explore options like egg freezing. Egg freezing is a powerful tool that offers people a bit of flexibility, what I like to call reproductive flexibility, the ability to preserve fertility for later in life when egg quality and egg quantity may be compromised and pregnancy rates much lower. The process of egg freezing involves stimulating the ovaries to mature a number of eggs, retrieving those eggs from the body, and freezing them for later use. It's important to note that while egg freezing does help improve the chances of having a child later in life, it does not guarantee this. 
Some of the eggs may not survive the thawing process. Some eggs may not fertilize and develop into embryos. And not all embryos will grow, implant, and result in a pregnancy. That said, egg freezing remains a valuable treatment option for many people. So what does this mean for you? Does this mean everyone should freeze their eggs, even young people in their early 20s? I would say not necessarily. It's about finding a balance between freezing younger, better quality eggs and assuming the costs and risks of a medical procedure. For many, freezing their eggs in their late 20s or early 30s will offer this balance at a time when they're more likely to use those eggs in the future. Having said that, starting to think about your fertility in your early 20s, when you're planning your education and your career, may be a wise first step. So if we think back to those amazing individuals I meet in my office, the 30-year-old student who's just gonna start her medical residency, the 36-year-old finance executive who's been busy building a successful career, the 34-year-old young woman who just left a long-term relationship. These are just a few examples of individuals who may want to consider fertility testing, possibly egg freezing, so they can focus on today, but still optimize their fertility for the future. I believe we should not only be educating individuals who are trying to get pregnant and facing difficulties. Education needs to start earlier. All women and people with ovaries should understand their fertility and specifically the impact of age on their fertility. Whether you're growing your family now, focusing on your education or career, or simply not ready to start a family, I hope this conversation has given you valuable insights into fertility and reproductive health. Remember, informed individuals are empowered individuals. Take control of your fertility today so you can make the right choices for tomorrow. I encourage you to have a conversation with your primary care provider about your fertility and your reproductive health goals. Think about the right time for a fertility assessment for you because knowledge is the first step in making informed decisions for your future. Thank you.